Up front now, the Democratic Congresswoman from California, Jackie Speer. She sits on the House Intelligence Committee. Congresswoman Speer, the White House, you heard Ross Shaw say the president was not aware uh, about Rob Porter's situation, lacking the full security clearance, the allegations of domestic abuse. Do you believe that? No, I don't believe it. I believe that uh, they knew full well. I mean, they were informed by one of his wives last year. They've known about this for at least a year. And frankly, what we have here is everyone thought that they were going to be able to weather the storm until photographs of one of his wives with a black eye came out. You know, I really wonder, when, it, when are we going to be willing to believe women without a photograph or an audio tape? Well, of course, and as, as, as to, to make the point here, he has two ex-wives, both of whom uh, said that this happened, one of whom had a protective order against him. He had a live-in girlfriend who had also called. Uh, Don began the White House counsel and, same, and shared uh, a similar allegations. So they, they, they had seen this again and again and again. Uh, Raj Shah today also was asked about uh, one of Porter's ex-wives uh, who claimed she told the FBI she thought he could be vulnerable to blackmail, Congresswoman, because of the domestic abuse allegations, right? If someone were to say, oh, well, leak these if, if you don't, then he might be vulnerable to that blackmail. Here is Raj Shah's response from the podium today. I'm not going to get into the specifics of the investigation itself. I think that's a question for the FBI and others. But um, you know, this is not our process. This is the process the U.S. government uses across agencies and has existed over numerous administrations. We know he went uh, basically a full year here uh, without a full security clearance. Congresswoman, do you believe Porter could have been blackmailed? That was a real risk? I think anyone who is vulnerable to um, that kind of conduct, uh, who is in a special place in the White House, could be vulnerable. Michael Flynn was another one who had lied. And then Sally Yates, the acting attorney general, went to the White House and said he will be potentially a subject of blackmail. You know, how many of the people closest to the president um, have lied on many forms, on security forms in particular. We don't know if Rob Porter lied or not, um, but certainly it became public or became clear that he was um, not going to pass the security clearance, and yet he continued to handle very top secret classified materials. Um, so you have Michael Flynn, you have George Papadopoulos, you have Rob Porter. When does it all end? I mean, and meanwhile, you know, here they are in a glass White House, and they're concerned about someone else lying, in that case, Christopher Steele, uh, who was the author of the dossier, and now they're trying to claim that he, he lied to the FBI. They should check their own house first. Should Chief of Staff John Kelly keep his job? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So you think he, he needs doesn't get it. He really doesn't get it. I want to ask you one other question, Congresswoman, since I have you here. Obviously, you've got this uh, shutdown tonight, edging closer. I don't know if you heard Rand Paul. He was just on the show. Uh, the minority leader, your minority leader, Pelosi, has said she will not vote for the bill. Are you a yes or a no on the bill? I'm a no on the bill. I'm a no on the bill because I'm waiting for Paul Ryan to do something quite simple. Just signal to us that there will be a vote on the DACA kids. That's all we're asking for. Let all the votes fall where they may, but we want to vote on the DACA kids. And to those that think that somehow there is too much spending on discretionary programs here, I mean, we're talking about extending the child health insurance program for 10 years. We're talking about providing money for those who suffered disasters, both forest fires and flooding. Uh, we're talking about the opioid crisis that the president said was a national emergency, and then he has not put a dime into it. So uh, enough with the photo ops. Let's do something and mean it. All right.